Why do people hate the humane AI pin? Analyzing opinions. People have expressed dislike for the humane AI pin due to various reasons such as its functionality, lack of synchronization with phones, issues with visibility and heat, and discomfort with talking to computers in public. Reviews and opinions from multiple sources indicate a general negative sentiment towards the device. Well, my work here is done. Thanks for watching. I was incredibly excited about the concept of the Humane AI Pin, a new way to interact with technology, voice first with a laser projector, and a bunch of cool features that supposedly promised to replace your smartphone. And when I first had a chance to try out the AI pin here in my studio for about an hour with an early demo unit, I was very impressed, blown away by the technology, the features, the design. It was really quite a great experience. But soon after, I got my review unit and I've been using it every single day since I got it. And very quickly, the excitement has started to fade away and what's left is a device that is very expensive but very limited and doesn't fully justify why it exists just yet. Now, this device has received so much negativity across the board, but I'll be honest, there are a few things that it does that I'm actually quite happy with and I think are very impressive, but there are many shortcomings that make it just really not worth it. So this is essentially a mini wearable computer that operates through voice. You talk to it, it talks back. And with its laser projector, it also can show you more information. The actual unit is very small and kind of looks like a mini phone. It doesn't weigh much and I personally love the design and the case and the battery boosters. It all just feels so beautifully made and thoughtfully made. The company is started by two ex-Apple designers. They know how to make you feel like you have a product that is special and luxurious and exciting. The packaging is beautiful. Everything about the design is wonderful. Everything snaps together with magnets and that's how it stays onto your clothing. Battery booster behind, AI pin in front, and it stays on very well with the strong magnets. Although I do find it quite awkward to take off and put on. I often end up dropping the battery or the backing and it just ends up being this whole affair. And you're not gonna just put it on once and leave it on throughout your entire day. You have to take it off multiple times throughout your day to switch out the batteries or switch off the backing so it's not just like a put it on and forget about it type thing. And depending on the clothing, it might actually sag down your neckline a little bit. I had one shirt that my neckline just kept pulling down, but this shirt, it seems to be fine. So it also just varies there as well. But you don't have to always use the battery booster with the AI pin when it's attached to your clothing. You can use the lightweight backing, or you can use the clip-on attachment that actually rotates. But then you don't get the battery life that you definitely need from the battery booster. The AI pin does have a built-in battery, but it is quite small and will only last you like maybe a couple hours and that's it. But I'll talk about battery life a bit later. To talk to it, you just tap and hold. There's no wake word, which I actually prefer, and I think it does work quite well. It's pretty responsive. If you prefer it not to talk to you when you ask a question, you just tap and hold, ask your question, and then raise up your hand like this. Pretty straightforward. Instead of just reading the answer out to you, it'll display it on your hand with the laser projection. So you do have some options how you can actually interact with this device, but it is pretty much all voice first. And I think the laser feature is incredibly fluid, smooth, and feels very futuristic. Like the animations are impressively smooth, but anywhere besides indoors or in the shade, it's hard to see really anything projected on your hand. And I also find the gesture controls to be really cool in theory, but actually using some of them is a bit challenging. Humane says to kind of move your hand around as if you have a marble in your hand, but I often find it's a little bit awkward and the laser projector just ends up off my hand and I don't end up actually selecting what I want. But when you do select something, it's just a simple pinch and that almost always works. It's very responsive. I like that quite a bit. And you do have to have a password on this because if someone just grabs it off you, they can access like all your information. But entering a password every time you take it off and put it back on can be a little bit annoying. You have to move your hand like in and out to access the numbers and I'm not really a fan of that either. So that's just kind of a basic overview of the AI pin. It's beautifully designed, everything feels very thoughtfully designed. There's some cool technology in theory, but what does it actually do?
So the way I initially saw it and the way others saw this device as well was a way to pretty much replace your smartphone because it has all the makings of a smartphone replacement. It can make calls, send texts, it has cameras, it can do a whole bunch of things. But spoiler alert, it's not going to replace your smartphone anytime soon. Yes, it can make calls and send texts actually pretty well, but not with your current phone number, a whole new phone number. It can remember things you tell it, play music, but only through Tidal right now, answer almost any question, but with some limits. It can take burst photos and videos up to 15 seconds, and they do look okay, they have a nice wide angle, but they're not the best, and video quality is very shaky and not that great. It can translate things, which is a really cool feature. Translate to Japanese. How can I get to Shinjuku Station? Let me know if that's right in the comments. Translate to French. How do I get to the Eiffel? How do I get to the Eiffel Tower? Also, what's the best croissant in the city? And you can also pair a pair of Bluetooth earbuds or pair it to your car to listen to music. And this is a beta feature currently, but you can actually ask it to look in front of you and tell you about an object or a scene and get more information, which is pretty cool. Look at this and translate what the flavor is. The flavor of the chips is wasabi seaweed. Now, I've rarely used the calling, the texting, even the cameras. These are just features that I don't feel like are very useful with this device, especially if I have my phone just down in my pocket. Now, there are some questions and curiosities throughout my day that I've just gone to the AI pin versus my phone to quickly answer rather than being distracted from the moment. What's in an ancient city in Minecraft? An ancient city in Minecraft is a palatial structure found in deep dark biomes at layer minus 51, harboring chests containing unique items that cannot be found elsewhere. Mm, good to know. What's a stromboli? Finding stromboli info. Stromboli is a type of baked turnover filled with Italian cheeses, cold cuts, or vegetables served hot. It was invented by Italian Americans in the United States. Makes sense. What year was the White Lily Diner opened? Finding opening year. The White Lily Diner was opened in 2016. But one thing you have to keep in mind is this is not connected to your phone in any way. You can connect your email, Google Photos, and Tidal, but that's pretty much it. Unless you switch completely over to this device, which personally I didn't do because there's no way I could use this as my only device all day. I got a bit of a list going here, so just bear with me. It can't display any images or visuals from the internet. There's no fitness information. There's no recipe guides. It can't play any streaming service or media except for Tidal Music. It can't currently set timers or alarms. It can't currently give me directions anywhere. There's no apps, so no Uber, no WhatsApp, no Instagram, pretty much no social apps. Actually, there is no social apps. Just think about any app you might currently use it's not here. And if there's none of these apps available, you're just gonna pull out your phone and check them anyways, so why bother using this? It can also be pretty slow to answer sometimes, but not like unbearably bad, at least in my experience. It's really quick for things like what's the time and what's the battery percent, but everything else takes a little bit more time. Are there any Olive Gardens in Canada? Finding Olive Garden locations. There are Olive Garden locations in Canada, including in Niagara Falls, on and Edmonton, AB. So first of all, there is no Olive Gardens in Ontario. The one it's mentioning is actually in the States. And in Edmonton, I didn't know about that, but it is true, I did verify. Which rapper dropped a pizza brand? Finding rapper. Rapper Lil Yachty launched his own frozen pizza brand called Yachty's Pizzeria. How tall is the CN Tower? Finding tower height. The CN Tower is 1815 feet tall. Cite your sources. 
The information was sourced from reliable online platforms such as Delish, Store Brands, Afrotech, and Wolfram Alpha. Has Drake dropped a diss track in response to Kendrick Lamar? Finding diss track. Drake has reportedly responded to Kendrick Lamar's diss track with a song called Push-Ups, firing shots in various directions, including at Lamar. But what's funny is I actually asked that question about 10 minutes ago as a test, and it said there's no information. So sometimes it gives you the right answer, and sometimes it just doesn't know. Give me a list of things to do in Italy. Finding attractions. For a comprehensive list of things to do in Italy, it's best to consult travel guides, tourism websites, or official tourism resources for Italy. So pretty much, um, it just told me to Google it. There have been expressions of dislike for the Humane AI pin due to various reasons such as its limited functionality. What does MKBHD think? MKBHD's opinion on the Humane AI pin is not available. It was yesterday. And sometimes it just won't have a network connection or can't connect to the server despite being in a Wi-Fi or data zone. So I don't know what's going on there. But now let's talk about the price. There is a subscription service that is $24 a month plus taxes and fees to cover the unlimited talk, text, and data and the AI services on top of its $700 USD price. But uh, actually mine is $800 because it has this white color and the silver chrome aluminum band. You can also call internationally outside of the US for an additional $15 a month, and it's also an additional $5 a day for roaming if you travel outside of the states with it. And if you end up roaming with it for a longer period of time, over 50% of your total data usage in any three month period within a 12 month period, the service will apparently stop working. So if you wanna buy this and you're not in the states, don't try to buy this. It's just not gonna happen. It's not worth it right now. And also if you travel a lot like for months on end or you're going on like a workaway trip or something, this probably isn't the best option because from my understanding, the service is just gonna stop working after a period of time, I guess. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I'm making sense of from the website. Now I am based in Canada and this is a review unit from Humane. I've been on roaming this entire time. I'm impressed with that. Roaming does actually work. But I'm also wondering like what point does the service just stop working for me because I've been roaming this whole time? I don't know. And it's not like the Humane subscription is like an optional thing. Like this is essential to actually use this device. Even if you never use the calling, the texting, the new phone number, even if you only stay in a Wi-Fi zone, you never touch the data, you're still paying for the subscription because you have to access the AI features which Humane offers. Now, just like ChatGPT, for example, the latest version isn't free and all these like language models are not free for everyone to use. So I understand that Humane is trying to actually, you know, make money from this, not just lose money by using these AI services. But back to the cost, this is a very expensive device. The upfront cost, the subscription service, if you want to talk to your friends outside of the States, if you want to roam with this device when you go traveling, this is going to cost you a lot. The subscription service also gives you access to the unlimited cloud storage within Humane Center, which is kind of like a companion app for this device, except it's actually not an app. It is a web-based thing, which I actually do prefer. No additional app needed. You can use it on any device. It's kind of nice. And looking into Humane Center, there are a list of software features that are currently here and features that will be coming in future updates. The next one is in the summer, apparently. And then there's things that they're working on for even further beyond that. So you can actually see kind of like where they're going with this pin and see what's coming next. And I'm kind of impressed with the company being very responsive and very positive towards negative criticism. Like, they've been very, very forgiving about even the most negative reviews. Because they know that this product is a work in progress. And they also know that if they just fight back against reviewers, try to silence reviewers, it's going to dig a grave for Humane. So I'm glad they're not doing that. They're being open to criticism. And that's a good thing. But for every positive thing about this product, there's also a bunch of other issues as well. It doesn't get answers right sometimes. It's almost always kind of warm when you have the battery booster on because it's always charging. It's even gotten to the point where I've had to just wait for it to cool down for a period of time. Like I was entering a Wi-Fi password and all of a sudden it's just like, no, it's too hot gotta wait for it to cool down. And I can only imagine how bad it's gonna be in the summer when I'm outside with this thing in the sun. 
it's gonna, it's gonna overheat. And the battery life isn't really that great either. Like even just sitting still for a few hours doing absolutely nothing with this pin and the battery just drains and says, okay, it's dead. Like what's going on? Now I have gotten pretty close to using this for a whole day of usage, but that's with swapping out the batteries, putting the old ones in the case, and eventually putting the whole pin with the battery inside the charging case. Now the actual pin itself does have a battery built in, but it is quite a small battery, so it's good for like a couple hours. If you're gonna go shopping, you're going for a quick run, it's good for that. But the battery itself in the pin is not gonna last a whole day, so you do have to have those battery boosters with you at all times, as well as the charging case. And I feel like this is a really simple one to fix, but if the pin is inside the case, even if the batteries are all dead and the pin is on like 2%, it should be silent. Like that's a simple thing to fix, I think. I don't need to be woken up at like 3 a.m. to be told the battery is on its way out. Like, come on. Now the charger itself when I'm at home is very well designed. I take the pin with the battery pack, just pop it on, or even just the battery pack itself, and it charges it all up. And the battery case does charge over USB-C, so that's pretty nice. You don't have to bring around the whole like wireless charger set every single time, that's good. And the batteries themselves snap to the back of the case so they don't just fall out when you open up the case. See, the design, the simple things like this, Humane nailed. It's great, but the case itself doesn't actually hold that much of a charge, so not great. That's the Humane AI pin. What it does, what it doesn't do, what it is and what it isn't. So the last question is here, where does Humane go next? Where does Humane go from here? What happens next for the pin, for the company? What's next? Humane has a roadmap. These are not dumb people. These are very smart people behind this company. It's a small team, but a very smart team. But that roadmap feels very long. It feels like a very far away dream, especially considering how the product is right now. And the next software update coming in the summer, at least right now, doesn't have that many features that are gonna save this product. This device should have just really been kind of like a smartwatch. It should have been an accessory to your phone rather than a whole standalone device, but Humane remains very ambitious. It also should have been cheaper, like a lot cheaper, because the price of this device, even just the standalone price, is the cost of a very good smartphone, which can do a whole lot more. So if you are buying this, it's definitely not just a, you know, a quick little decision, it's a big choice. You're buying this for a specific reason. Maybe you just love new technology and trying out new things. Maybe you want to use like one specific feature every single day, like the translate feature, which is really good. Maybe you just have a lot of disposable income, I don't know. This also shouldn't have shipped to customers or reviewers just yet. It also should have been marketed a lot better early on with more information to keep us excited, but also, you know, keeping our expectations where they should be. And there's like so many other things. And I can't stop thinking about how this device is so similar to the Vision Pro, but kind of the opposite. The Vision Pro has amazing software, like years and years ahead, probably the best experience I've used on a device, but the hardware is what brings it back. It's so big, it's so clunky, the battery life isn't great. But with this product, it's kind of the opposite in some ways, where the hardware is so good, it's so well designed, it's beautiful, it's compact, it all kind of just works perfectly together in an ecosystem, but the software is missing so much, it's very far behind what the hardware looks like and how the hardware feels. Now, I'm not just gonna just toss this in a drawer and forget about it, I wanna actually keep using this, keep testing it out, keep seeing where the technology goes, because I do love the idea of the AI pen. I would love a future where I can just go outside with just this and no phone to get groceries or see some friends or just go for a walk and just remain completely focused in the moment. But sadly, we're just not there yet. Maybe it's with a future software update, maybe it's with a future version of the AI pen, maybe it's with a whole different device from a different company altogether, I don't know. But right now, this isn't it does a lot of cool things, it shows an exciting future, but that future is still far away. But that's it. I want to hear your thoughts on the Humane AI pin. What do you think of this device? What do you think of the design, the features, what you wish it could do? Tell me in the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.